Hi, the topic of this video is the prediction of a PMBM density. The PMBM prediction begins with the posterior parameters. And what we are seeking is the predicted PMBM density. And to compute this, we have a set transition density with a probability of survival, PS, a single object transition density, pi, and a Poisson point process birth model that has a mixture representation with NB components with weights WB and densities PB. And what we want are the parameters of the predicted PMBM density. And how to compute them is the topic of this video. The PMBM prediction can be summarized as follows. When we have a standard random finite set motion model with a Poisson point process birth, undetected and detected objects can be predicted independently of each other. The parameters of the undetected Poisson point process intensity consists of a union of parameters from the previous time step that are predicted and the Poisson point process birth parameters. Just like in MBM filtering, each multi Bernoulli can be predicted independently of the other multi Bernoullis. Actually, in the PMBM filter, the prediction of the MBM part is almost the same as in MBM filtering. The important difference is that we do not add any Bernoulli birth parameters. It follows from this that the number of parameters increases due to the fact that we add Poisson point process birth parameters to the undetected Poisson point process. Given that the undetected objects and detected objects are predicted independently, we will start with the undetected Poisson point process prediction, and then we will talk about the detected multi Bernoulli mixture prediction. The predicted Poisson point process intensity for the undetected objects is given by the integral of the transition density, the probability of survival, and the posterior intensity. And then we add the birth intensity. So as we see, the predicted intensity is the sum of two intensities. The first is the prediction of the surviving undetected objects. In other words, the intensity for the undetected objects that survive to the next time step. The second part is the birth intensity, the intensity of undetected objects that possibly appeared in the surveillance area at this time. And if we have mixture representations for the intensities, which is the typical case in MOT applications, then it can be shown that the predicted intensity is the weighted sum of the prediction of each posterior mixture component, plus the weighted sum of the birth components. In the undetected Poisson point process prediction, we first have the posterior parameters, which is a set of NU mixture components with weights WU and densities PU. The set of predicted Poisson point process parameters is the union of two sets of parameters. First we have the prediction of the Poisson point process parameters in the posterior intensity, and we will show on the next slide what this function predict does. Then we have the set of Poisson point process birth parameters. So from this, we can see that the number of mixture components in the undetected Poisson point process intensity increases. It's the sum of the number of posterior mixture components plus the number of birth mixture components. In an earlier video, we saw some examples for how we can parameterize the birth Poisson point process intensity. So what we need to show now is how to predict a posterior mixture component. Given a posterior mixture component, a weight and a density at time k, the predicted weight and density at time k plus 1 are given by the following integral equation. So the predicted weight times the predicted density is equal to the posterior weight times an integral of the transition density, the probability of survival, and the posterior density. From this, we can show that the predicted weight is equal to the posterior weight times the posterior probability of survival for undetected component T, which is defined as the integral of the probability of survival and the component density. The predicted density is equal to the integral of the transition density times the probability of survival PS, the posterior density, and then normalized by the probability of survival for the specific component PSUT. 
This division normalizes the density, and the integral with the transition density then gives us the density at time step k plus 1. So now that we have the prediction of the mixture components in the posterior undetected intensity, we can illustrate this prediction in an example. Let's take a constant probability of survival, Ps, and a linear and Gaussian motion model with model matrix F and noise covariance Q. The Poisson point process birth is a Gaussian mixture intensity, and the posterior undetected intensity is also a Gaussian mixture. In this case, the predicted intensity is, just like we saw earlier, the sum of two intensities. First we have the sum of the posterior components, where the predicted weights are given by the posterior weight times the constant probability of survival. And the predicted densities are Gaussian, with mean and covariance given by the Kalman prediction. And lastly, we add the birth intensity. So with a constant probability of survival and linear and Gaussian motion model, we use the Kalman prediction for each posterior mixture component, we multiply the posterior weights for the probability of survival, and we add the birth components. And this gives us the predicted intensity. We can illustrate this with a one-dimensional example, with a random walk motion model. Here we have a one-dimensional posterior undetected intensity, with four Gaussian components in the mixture. So what you can see are the individual components, the product of the weights and the Gaussians. And now we've plotted the posterior intensity instead, which is the sum of the weighted Gaussians. In the prediction, we first multiply the posterior intensity with the probability of survival, which is 0.9 in this case. And as you can see in the figure, this decreases the intensity. Next we have the integral with the transition density, which in this example is a random walk with variance 4. In the figure, we can see that the variances of the Gaussians have increased. Then we have the birth intensity, which in this example is a single Gaussian with weight 0.05, mean 0, and variance 1. And this is visualized in the figure by the green dashed line. If we add the two parts of the predicted intensity, we get the predicted intensity shown here in blue. Compared to the posterior intensity in orange, the predicted intensity is lower due to the probability of survival and the noise in the motion model, except in locations where we have added birth intensity. Lastly, we can also show the components of the predicted intensity here shown together with the posterior components. We can clearly see how the prediction of the posterior components both decreases the intensity due to the probability of survival and spreads the intensity due to the noise in the motion model. That was the prediction of the Poisson point process part of the PMBM density. So next we have the MBM part for the detected objects. In a PMBM filter, the posterior MBM parameters are, for each multi-Bernoulli, the log weights and the set of Bernoulli parameters. In the predicted MBM, we have the same number of global hypotheses and the same hypothesis probabilities. So in other words, the same number of multi-Bernoulli's and the same log weights. Then, for each multi-Bernoulli, we have the predicted Bernoulli parameters, which, for each multi-Bernoulli H and each Bernoulli I, are computed the same way as in an MBM filter. For the sake of clarity, we will repeat this on the next slide. A noteworthy difference to the MBM prediction in an MBM filter is that in a PMBM filter, for each multi-Bernoulli, we now have the same number of Bernoullis. For the predicted Bernoulli parameters, we have that the predicted probability of existence is the product of the posterior probability of existence and the posterior probability of survival for this Bernoulli, which is the integral of the probability of survival and the posterior object density. The predicted Bernoulli state density is given by dividing the probability of survival and the posterior state density with the probability of survival for this Bernoulli, PSIH. And then we multiply with the transition density and marginalize the previous state. So as we mentioned earlier, this Bernoulli prediction 
is exactly the same as in the MVM filter. So now that we have both the prediction of the Poisson point process for undetected objects and the multi Bernoulli mixture for detected objects, we can illustrate the PMBM prediction with an example. So let's take a posterior undetected intensity with two Gaussian components. The state vector consists of two-dimensional position and two-dimensional velocity. We can see that the component on the left has a non-zero velocity vector and the one on the right has an all-zero velocity vector. And the intensity weights are written just below the covariance ellipses. As an alternative to visualizing the individual mixture components in the mixture, we can visualize the intensity as a heat map, as shown here. In this figure, warmer color means higher intensity. To make the visualization simple, we take a multi Bernoulli mixture that has just a single multi Bernoulli. And this one has four Bernoullis that have Gaussian state densities. And the uh, probabilities of existence are written next to the covariance ellipses. The motion model is a constant velocity model, and the probability of survival is 0.9. The birth intensity has a single mixture component with position in the origin and all zero velocity vector. So this gives us three components in the predicted intensity for the undetected objects. For the two components that were in the posterior intensity, their weights have decreased and their covariances have increased. The one with a non-zero velocity vector has also moved in accordance with the motion model. And lastly, we have added the birth component, which has weight 0 0.05. If we plot the predicted intensity as a heat map using the same color scale as we used for the posterior intensity, we see that we now have more intensity around the origin because the birth component was added there. And we see that for the component on the left, the intensity has moved and is spread over a larger area. Lastly, we have the predicted Bernoullis. Their motion follows the constant velocity motion model and the probabilities of existence decrease by a factor equal to the probability of survival. Note that if we had an MBM with more than one multi Bernoulli, which is the typical case in MOT applications, then each multi Bernoulli would be treated just like the one illustrated here. Okay, that was how we predict the PMBM density. Next, we're going to have a look at the base update of the PMBM density.